Humans are interesting. Just when we think we have learned everything about our species, something new and exciting pops up that challenges our understanding of how we work. In the case of the Fugate family, however, this is a story that goes back a few hundred years. Let's get into it. If I told you that there was a family of blue people living in a remote area, you might think it's just another urban legend. However, up until the 1960s, this was actually true. Our story begins near the town of Hazard in the U.S. state of Kentucky around the early 1800s. A man by the name of Martin Fugate married a woman named Elizabeth Smith. This would have been an ordinary marriage if it wasn't for the fact that both of them carried a recessive trait for methemoglobinemia. Yes, it took me multiple tries to pronounce that. Anyways, methemoglobinemia is a blood disorder where methemoglobin levels are elevated in the blood. Methemoglobin is a type of hemoglobin. Hemoglobins are what transport oxygen in your blood. The issue with having too much methemoglobin is that oxygen does not bind to it, meaning oxygen is not being transported throughout the blood as well as it would be normally. If you've ever seen somebody choking, you'll notice they turn blue. This is because oxygen is being restricted. Well, this also explains why some members of the Fugate family were blue. Out of Martin and Elizabeth's seven children, four of them had this disorder. With this disorder, if their blood had over 20% methemoglobin, they'd likely have seizures and heart problems, but most of them didn't. In fact, aside from being blue, most of them lived relatively normal lives. The question is, however, if the trait is recessive, wouldn't it go away if one of their children had a child with somebody else who didn't have the trait? Well, yes, except unfortunately, that wasn't the case. The reason the Fugates remained blue is because of inbreeding. In fairness, this inbreeding was an unfortunate byproduct of living in such a remote place where there wasn't that many people. In fact, the area around Hazard didn't even get a railroad until the early 1900s. So for those living in the area, if they met somebody and had kids, chances are that person was probably related to them and that person probably had the trait. This led to the Fugates continuing to be blue. By the 1960s, however, descendants of Martin and Elizabeth were still around and still had the blue. Two of these people, Patrick and Rachel, were embarrassed by their blue skin since they were aware that it was due to a lineage of incest, so they sought out a cure to this condition. This led them to hematologist Madison Kaywin of the University of Kentucky, who treated it with more blue. Well, methylene blue dye to be exact. Oddly enough, this blue dye actually converted the methemoglobin in their blood to normal old hemoglobin, changing their skin from blue to white within minutes. The last descendant of the Fugates to have any hint of blue was Benjamin Stacy, who only had it in his lips and fingertips when cold, but he eventually lost it altogether early on in his life. While the blue Fugates no longer exist, blue people still pop up from time to time. One of the most famous was Paul Carrison, who turned blue after ingesting silver to help treat a skin condition, which ultimately led to his skin permanently turning blue due to Argyria, a different condition caused by consuming too much silver. Human genetics are strange. People are diverse and will always have traits different from others. While it's fun to look into stories like that of the Fugates, we can't forget how challenging life must have been for these people. So if there's any takeaway from this video, is to be kind to your fellow human, because we're all kinda weird in our own ways. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.